All right, so uh, today we are starting by looking at the effect of an increase in autonomous investment on equilibrium income, okay? Assuming there's an autonomous change in the level of investment, how is this supposed to affect the income level, okay? So uh, with, with this one, uh, assuming this is the initial aggregate expenditure curve, okay? This is our 45 degrees output line. So the initial equilibrium was at point A with uh, an equilibrium income of Y0, okay? But now there, there is an increase in an autonomous increase in investment. And as a result, that is going to cause an upward shift in the aggregate expenditure curve. It means that the equilibrium is going to shift from point A to point B. So this is what we'll come to, which means that there's going to be an increase in uh, the equilibrium output or income from Y0 to Y1. So this is the effect of uh, an autonomous change. This specifically, this is an increase in investment on the equilibrium income level. This is under Kings, if you remember the first model that we looked at uh, changes in investment had no effect on output at all. Okay, this is the case where the first uh, diagram here is the case where we are using uh, aggregate expenditure or aggregate demand is equal to y is equal to the level of output. This one is the second diagram is where they use the uh, leakages to injections approach. So the Injections are investment and then government expenditure. So this is the curve, they are all taken as autonomous. That's why it is horizontal to the income axis. And they, this is our leakages uh, curve, the sum of uh, savings and then taxation. So the initial equilibrium was at point A with uh, equilibrium income of Y0, but now there's an increase. There's an autonomous increase in investment, which means that the uh, injection curve is going to shift Upwards, so that is what we are seeing. So this vertical distance is the changing uh, investment. So this is going to be our new le level of uh, equi equilibrium point. Okay, this is going to be the new equilibrium point, and this is translating into a, a, a higher level of national income. Okay, and so what we have seen is that uh, under, under the Keynesian system an autonomous increase in investment is going to cause an increase in uh, equilibrium income or output. I hope that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, what we have here is the effect of an increase in tax on equilibrium income. If they increase tax, I mean, how will this affect equilibrium income? Uh, under the first one, uh, what was the effect of uh, an autonomous tax on income? Do you remember? The, the, the previous model that we looked at, do, do you remember the effect of an increase in autonomous tax on the equilibrium level? Okay, so let's concentrate on the Keynesian. And now uh, let's start from the aggregate demand is equal to output approach. So this was our initial uh, aggregate expenditure curve, okay? Now the equilibrium point was at B. So this was our, the okay, this is the initial one. This one, so the equilibrium point was at A. So we're having Y0 bar being our uh, equilibrium national income. Now there's an increase in autonomous tax and that is, uh, it affects the level of consumption, okay? It enters the aggregate demand function as a negative variable, okay? So uh, whenever there is an increase in tax, I mean, aggregate, expenditure has to reduce by this value minus B times the change in T. 
So assuming the tax was uh, increased by 20 units, then the ACE effect on aggregate expenditure is going to be the product of the marginal propensity to consume times that change in tax. And that is going to cause a downward shift in the expenditure curve, okay? A downward shift in the expenditure curve. So which means that the new equilibrium is coming to be it's coming to be so this is the new this is the new level of equilibrium i i hope you understand do we understand do we understand yes please okay and then when we use the leakages and then injections approach, this is the injection curve, okay? And this was our initial um, leakages curve, okay? Our initial leakages curve. Charlie, but picking a catcher, Oscar said we tried it. Okay, sorry. Uh, so this, this was the initial uh, equilibrium. Now there's an increase in tax. Uh, excuse me, just a minute. You, no, no, no. You. Okay, so uh, the initial, the initial li uh, leakage curve was this. But now because of the increase in tax, this is going to be the new uh, leakage curve, which means that the equilibrium point is going to move from point A to point B, which is causing a reduction in the level of income or the equilibrium income. So this is the effect of an increase in autonomous tax. It causes a reduction in equilibrium income. Okay, it causes a, a reduction in equilibrium income. Okay, so uh, all the things we are seeing now is the explanation that I was given. Okay, uh, let's look at something called fiscal stabilization policy. Okay, whenever uh, the output level moves from its equilibrium point, what can the government do? to re-stabilize the economy, to put the economy back into equilibrium. That's what we, we call a fiscal stabilization policy. Now, um, what we have here, this is the initial aggregate expenditure curve, okay? Uh, okay, sorry, the, this is the initial one. And then there is, so, and then the, the, there is a reduction in investment. Okay, there's a fall in investment. So if there's a fall in investment, it means that the equilibrium point is going to move from point A to point B. A reduction in investment is seen as a downward shift in the uh, aggregate expenditure curve. Okay, a downward shift, that's what we have here, which means that the equilibrium point is moving from point A to point B. And also equilibrium output will move from uh, YP to YL. Okay, so that was the initial effect of the fall in investment. Now, if the government wants to put the economy back to where it was at point A, then it just has to do what? Increase government expenditure. So by increasing government expenditure, which is just the same as the initial fall in investment, that is going to cause an upward shift in the aggregate expenditure curve, which means that the equilibrium point will move back to A, okay? So this will mean that the government has been able to stabilize the economy. The initial change in aggregate expenditure was coming from investment. There was a fall in investment, and as a result, there was a reduction in the national income from YP to YL, okay? But now, if the government wants to put the economy back to where it was pre previously, then it has to what? Increase government expenditure. 
just by the same proportion as this, but um, mathematically, they need to work through the uh, the K, and because the K for investment is the same as the K for gym, whatever changes that happens to investment should also happen to gym. So if investment has to decrease by 20, then you have to increase the government expenditure to by uh, 20 so that we can go back to the old equilibrium point. And that would mean we are coming back to the old equilibrium income, okay? So this is the AD is equal to Y approach. When we, we use the leakages and then the injections, uh, the, this is our leakages curve. And then this was our initial uh, injection curve, okay? With investment and government as expenditure here. And there was a fall, there was an initial fall in investment. And as a result, the curve had to shift downwards, which means that the new equilibrium would be point B, meaning equilibrium income has shifted from YP to YL, a reduction in national income. So for the government to be able to stabilize this economy, it had to increase government expenditure. So by doing so, the uh, injection curve will shift upwards again. Okay, which means that we will move from B and go back to A, and then the equilibrium output will move from YL to YP. Is that okay? Do we understand? Yes. Okay. Okay, so this was the explanation I was given. Okay, so this is the end of the Keynesian one, okay? Okay, so uh, what, what we want to look at now is that people don't really uh, look at the level of interest rates to whether hold money or hold bonds. Rather, they base on uh, what the interest rate is going to be in the near future to decide whether they need to hold bonds or they need to hold uh, money. And under this theory, Keynes uh, stated that when you have money, there are only two assets that uh, you can use your money for. Is either you hold a bond or you hold your, your, your money, just, just like that. So you holding money depends on uh, uh, your preference, whether you need to hold bonds or you just need to keep your ma money. And that decision was based on the level of uh, interest rate. But what I'm trying to, to say is, uh, it wasn't really based on the current level of interest rate, but what they anticipated the interest rate to be in the near future. So that that's what we want to look at now, the relationship between interest rate and then the value of an asset. Then we we'll relate that to how people choose between holding money or holding bonds. Okay, so these are the terms that we'll be, we'll be using. When you see P, we are talking about the annual interest payment. When you hold a bond, the uh, interest that you are going to earn on your bond after a year, and then R is the interest rate, and then V is the value of the asset, the face value of the bond. Here we are using bond. The face value of the, the bond that you are holding. So P is uh, interest payment. R is the interest rate and then the VIN, the value of your asset. So this is the relationship between them, okay? Your interest payment is equal to the interest rate times the value of your asset, okay? And what you are trying to look at here is the relationship between the interest rate and then the value of your asset. So now just assuming that uh, the face value of a bond is $100 and the interest rate is 10%, then it means that uh, the uh, interest payment that you are going to get at the end of the year is going to be 10% of what? 
of hundred dollars and that is ten dollars okay hmm. that is going to be ten dollars now uh okay uh now just after buying your bond one thing you need to know is the face value of, of your bond will never change and then the interest payment too will never change the only thing that, that can change is the level of interest rate and it, it changes i mean almost every day okay as for the reasons we are not here to discuss uh, those reasons so whenever there is an increase or a decrease in the level of interest rate then what is going to happen in the bonds market how would that cause uh, individuals to either hold more bonds or hold less bonds now let's assume that after you held this bond, okay, a bond of uh, a face value of hundred dollars, and then uh, now the initially the interest rate was ten percent. Now there, there's an increase in the interest rate from ten uh, percent to eleven percent. So it means that if you want to find your new face value because of the change in, in interest rates, your vein is now going to grow. If you make vein the subject here, we have V is equal to P over R. So that is going to be what? Uh, 10 divided by what? The interest rate is 0 0.11. We are getting what? 90.9. .9. It means that now there's a reduction in the face value. So if you try to sell your bond again, then what is going to happen? It means that you, you are losing. Okay. Initially, the face value, this is. Uh, the amount that you bought your bond, you bought it at the price of hundred dollars, because the interest rate was ten percent. Okay, now uh, there's an increase in interest rate from ten percent to eleven percent, and as a result, the new phase value is what ninety point nine, which is less than uh, the the value that you bought it. Okay, the vo value that you bought it. So this mean, means that whenever there's an increase in interest rate there's a reduction in the value of um your bond or whatever assets that is affected by interest rate okay so there's an inverse relationship between the rate of interest and then the face value of whatever bond that you want to buy now what happens if you try to sell your your bond you bought it at what at hundred dollars, and you were expecting a, a, an interest payment of what of ten dollars. So now there's an increase in interest rate. What is going to happen if you sell this uh, bond that you bought? Now, what is going to happen is that you are going to suffer a capital loss because you bought it for. Uh, <laughs> hundred dollars and now because of an increase in interest rate if you try selling it you could only get 90.9 .9. okay you could only get 90.9 .9. so if you try selling it it means that you you are losing so now that the interest rate is high just hold your bond just hold your bond okay let's hold on to this statement when the interest rate increases in other words when it becomes high you are afraid of the capital loss you don't want to sell it at a cheaper phase value as a result with a higher level of interest rate it is better you hold your bond just hold your asset now let's consider a case where there's a reduction in interest rate okay the interest rate is now nine percent Let's look at the face value. Your face value is going to be the P over R, which is 10 divided by 0, 0.9. So this is equal to 111.11 dollars, which is, which is way, which is way higher than, um, 
the price that you, you bought it, the, the face value that you bought it. So now, if you wish to sell it, uh, you can see you are getting a higher uh, face value for the bond that, that you bought. And why, why is it so? It is so because of the reduction in uh, the level of interest rate. So whenever interest rate falls, then uh, the face value of interest rates will, uh, of the bond, the face value of your asset is going to, I mean, move up. So uh, now we've also seen that with a reduction in interest rates, there is an increase in the face value of your asset. So what happens if you try to sell your bond? You are going to make uh, a capital gain. You are getting more than you bought your uh, your asset. Okay. So now we 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 want to look at why people hold their money for the speculative purpose. Last two is when we're talking about. You see that before we get here, they just state that when the interest rate is high, uh, people hold less money because of the speculative purpose. Or maybe because we're seeing the interest rate as the cost of holding money. When, when you put your money in, into uh, an investment, into a business venture, assuming you loan it out, then uh, you earn an interest on it. And that interest was based on the level of interest rate. So with a higher level of interest rate, when you put your money there, you are getting more returns. So it becomes too expensive to rather hold money. It's better you you put it in a bank for more interest. But now we've seen what happens in the bonds market whenever there is either an increase or a decrease in uh, the level of interest rate. So let's based on that. And then um, let's look at the speculative purpose for holding money. Now what happens is that uh, people try to hold their money, wait, for some time, look at the level of interest rate, then they will take advantage of it just to make sure that they can uh, gain on whatever asset that they try to hold. So now let's let's look at what happens. Now we are there. There is a very strong assumption. It's not so in the real world, but for kings, you just assume that uh, we only have two forms of assets. So bonds and then money, is either you hold bonds or you hold your money. Okay, so it is not very real, but that is what you will be holding on in this um, model. Now, people try to hold money when the interest rate is low. Why? Because they know that in the near future, the interest rate is, is going to move up. Interest rate, uh, it's just like the business cycle. If it's low today, then it is expected that in the near future, it is going to move up, okay? If it's too high today too, then we expect that in the near future, it's supposed to move down. So now when the interest rate is very low now, the people know that in the near future, interest rate is going up. And if you buy a bond now, and then there's an increase in interest rate, we saw that you are going to suffer a capital loss because of the increase in the face value. Are you with me? Yes. Good. So when interest rate is very low now, when interest rate is very low now, we know that in the near future, interest rate is going up. So if we have to hold a bond now, then when we get to that near future, we are going to have what a capital loss because the face value is going to reduce. That is the reason why when the interest rate is very low, people don't want to hold bonds. They rather want to keep their money. They want to wait. When the interest rate increases, then they will now go and buy the bond. And buying the bond means that in the near future, when interest rate falls, there's going to be an increase in the face value of the uh, uh, asset or bond, which means that they are going to have a capital gain. So 
if you understand what I'm trying to say here, what I'm trying to say is, it is not really or basically the current interest rate that affects the quantity of money that people hold, but their expectations about the future le level of interest rates. Okay, so when interest rate is low now, we want to wait. When it's high, then we buy our bond because if you buy it now, and then the near future, the interest rate increases, they are going to suffer a capital loss. So wait, when interest rate is high, then now you go and buy your bond, which is just confirming the initial statement that we made that when interest rates are high, we hold less money because now we go and buy more bonds. Buy more bonds means that you are holding less money. And when interest rate is low, we rather hold our money and wait for an increase in, in interest rate so that we will not uh, have that capital loss. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is what I was trying to... And then one thing you need to know is of the negative relationship between the interest rate and the price of the bond. The price of the bond is the face value. So as the price is moving up, the face value to is what? As interest rate is moving up, the price to is, is falling. Okay, so now uh, that is what we have stated that when interest rate is low, we don't want to hold bonds now. No, because of the capital loss that uh, is possible will suffer in the near future. So we wait when interest rates uh, increase, then we buy it. The time is almost up, so you just wait, connect. Okay. 